If you're looking for a prime lens that's definitely not going to break the bank like so many Sony lenses, why not try this f1.7 35mm prime lens from Nua. Hi guys, it's Andre. I really wanted an additional lens for my Sony ZV-E10 other than the standard kit lens and my other Sony lens, the 55 to 210 millimeter zoom lens. I'm sure I'm not the only one who scrolls through endless Amazon pages trying to look through the amazing lenses that Sony and other manufacturers offer. But if you're like me, one thing that stops you from buying is the price, sometimes more than the camera itself. Every once in a while you stumble across a suspiciously cheap and budget friendly lens like this one from Nua and you think, I wonder how good something this cheap can be. So I took the plunge and I'm going to show you exactly what I think of this lens and stay tuned for some sample images and video clips using this lens on my Sony ZV-10 and hopefully it will help you decide whether to try this lens yourself. This lens has a fixed focal length of 35 millimeters. So if you're used to zooming closer and further away from your subject with a zoom lens and it's on camera or on lens control, then you're not going to be able to do this with this lens. So you'll actually have to physically move closer or further back from your subject. This allows the lens to be very versatile and will allow you to use it in a whole variety of situations from landscapes to portraits, from urban shots to B-roll and so much more and provide those top quality shots. It's large aperture of f1.7 which is a major selling point for me because I felt a little bit restricted by the f3.5 aperture on the kit lens which I'm currently filming this video on now which means I'll be able to get more of that bokeh effect and be able to shoot in a much more light restricted environment and still get great picture and video quality. The first thing you notice when you take the lens out of the box is it's all metal body. The perceived prices of things like this sometimes distorts our vision of how things are meant to be. Because in hand, I would say comparing the initial feel of the newer lens and the kit lens, I would say that the newer lens definitely feels like it has a better build quality and is slightly heavier at 176 grams compared to the 116 grams of the kit lens. Taking off the metal cap, you'll see the multi-coated lens, which I'll take their word for, which is meant to reduce glare and reflections when shooting. In fact, the only thing that is actually plastic is the lens mount cap. It has a minimum focus distance of 30 centimeters and can fit a 49 millimeter lens filter, which is actually the same size as my 55 to 210 millimeter lens, which is why I also purchased this ND filter. So stay tuned for a later video where I'll do a review on this filter. On the side of the lens, you've got the focus and aperture rings that I'll get onto in a moment. On the back, you've got the E-mount fitting for this lens, which provides a secure fit for your camera. Newer also do this exact lens for Canon EF M-mount cameras. One thing to remember if you are considering this lens is that it's a manual lens, which means that you will have to decide what you want to focus on manually in every shot. In comparison to something like the kit lens, which is an autofocus lens, where you just press the button and it focuses on it automatically. But this is done simply by finally adjusting the focus ring on the lens nearest the subject and rotating it either clockwise or anti-clockwise from the 30 centimeter minimum focus distance all the way to infinity through about two thirds of the circumference of the hole lens. I find adjusting the ring to make those precise focus adjustments smooth apart from if you're going through the whole range from maximum to minimum then there is a small section in the middle that seems a little bit more resistive but not enough to ever prevent you from turning the ring and if you're only making those fine adjustments you'll probably never notice it. Just like focusing, you also get the manual lens control of the aperture for another ring on the lens set further back than the focus ring, but closer to the camera body with much smaller range from the wider let loads of light in, short depth of field creating value of f1.7 to the smaller opening, less light gathering, wider depth of field value of f22. Compared to many autofocus lenses on the market, this newer lens is missing those gold contacts that you see on those lenses, which means there is no way for the lens to communicate to the camera, which is why using a lens like this is so much more manual in so many more ways other than just focusing. If you've not set it up on your camera, you will have to make an adjustment in the settings to allow the camera to operate with a manual lens. On the Sony ZV-E10 and other Sony cameras with this same setting system, you will need to find and enable the option to release without lens, or on other cameras, it may be the M mode. I'm going to take some photo and video shots with this newer lens on my Sony ZV-E10. Let's go and have a look at some of those shots.
that was some of the shots I took with this newer lens. It's actually the first manual prime lens I've ever owned and so far I found it easy to use and it's allowed me to have a little bit more creative freedom on my shots compared to using zoom lenses like the kit lens. Although you don't get all the image information on screen due to the manual non-communicative nature of the lens, I'm still having fun experimenting with this lens. There's something about it being more manual that takes the modern camera like the ZV-10 and pushes it back a little bit from being that fully automated do everything for you system into a more of an input output sort of camera if you get what I mean. The sort of setup as with any setup where once you get a grasp of the capabilities of your equipment then you'll get some amazing shots. I'm far from being an expert in using lenses like this, but if I'm able to reproduce images like the ones that you just saw, imagine what they'll be like when I'm used to this camera and lens down the line. Follow my Twitter and Instagram if you want to see that journey. I know it's an old cliche that the camera and lenses are only the tools, and it's actually the operator like me, you, that provide the key to unlock and produce the beauty, but I have to admit, the lenses certainly help. We started this video by asking how good can something this cheap be and for me I'd say definitely worth it for the price. It seems like £70 or $70 is a steal with the quality that you're getting with this lens. The build quality with that compact all metal body, it's ease of use especially in low light environments and easy to manoeuvre focus and aperture rings to get just the shot you want whether that be a nice sharp image or a lovely defocused background shot. What more do you want from a lens? Yes, you can get better image quality from another lens, but you'll be spending three times plus more than this lens. So ask yourself this, is it worth it if you're on a tight budget? If you're after another lens and want something other than a kit lens, then why not, for me, try one of the best budget value for money in this newer f1.7 35mm lens. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. And why not watch one of these related videos next? I'll see you on the next one.